All right, hello students, welcome to another video lecture for ComSci 125 Operating Systems. In this video, we're going to learn about condition variables. So, in the previous uh, lectures, we've talked about the lock mechanism or the lock primitive, which is basically used to achieve mutual exclusion. When you say mutual exclusion, we try to ensure that a thread can uh, perform its or can run on, it, on a critical section without other threads uh, running in their critical section also so that race conditions will not happen. So uh, we also discuss the different approaches on how to use locks in implementing data structures. Now, in this chapter, we're going to talk about condition variables. Now, there are many cases where thread wishes to check right, whether a condition is true before continuing its execution. So more or less, it's more of a synchronization problem. Or in you have, you have one thread, uh, it will try to check whether another thread is done or something like that before it can continue its operation. An example would be a parent thread might wish to check whether a child thread has completed. And you know this uh, when we talk about process, right? We have a parent process, then you use fork to create a child process, and then we have the wait system call for which allows the parent process to wait for the child process to, to finish. Then in the discussion of the thread API, we also talked about the join function wherein uh, at this point, we know already that the each process has a main thread and additional threads can be created by using a thread library. So in the illustration that we presented here, we have a parent thread, which is basically the main thread in the process, and then uh, a secondary thread that will be created, which will be treated as a as a child child thread. But in any case, uh, I would like to emphasize that in Linux, uh, you usually don't have this parent thread and child thread relationship. We could just we consider them as threads. But in the illustration, we're just focusing on uh, the relationship, the parent and child relationship. So we are interested in implementing the join uh, function, meaning it will allow a parent thread to wait for a child thread. Uh, let's have uh, a basic uh, approach to solve this problem. So this is actually the template code that we would like to to run so we have the main we have the main uh, function here as you can see in the main function we have the uh, first we print that we are first we print that we are in the parent and then we create a thread here. And then we wait for the child thread, secondary thread here. And then we print N. We are expecting this kind of output. So parent begin, and then the child will be called because of this. Uh, this parameter here, and then parent end. So how are we going to accomplish this uh, output given this uh, template code? A uh, basic approach, which probably you will uh, think of if you are not familiar with threads and concurrency yet, will be something like this one. So we have you define a global variable done 
and this global variable will act as a flag so the modified code will look something like this still we have the print uh, parent print f print parent begin then the creation of the child thread and then we have a while loop here or a busy waiting line of code here so while done equals equals zero which is initially set to zero we have the busy waiting here or the spinning which it's up uh, cpu cycles and then print uh, the, and then the last one is parent and and then the child what the child does is after printing the after printing child it sets the done variable to one and when this loop happens again it will know that the, the value of done is one so it will exit and then this one will uh we'll go, we're going to achieve the this desired output using that approach it will work but the problem with the approach is that it is inefficient as the parent spins and wastes uh, CPU time. So it's basically uh, performing a jump instruction, jumping to itself. Okay. So that's the problem that we are trying to solve. So to solve that inefficiency, we can have what we call a condition uh, variable. Right. So, what is a condition variable? So, it's basically an explicit queue that threads can put themselves on when some state of execution or condition is not desired by waiting on the condition. So, uh, take note that it's an explicit queue. Okay? And then the threads will uh, put themselves in this uh, queue okay, uh, when certain conditions are uh, needed to be true. Right? So, well, and uh, they can wait on this, uh, on this uh, queue or this condition variable. This queue or condition variable, they can, they can be treated as the same. When we say waiting on the condition, it means that a thread puts uh, a thread puts itself in the queue until another thread signals and this ensures that the thread does not spin so remember we have different thread states when uh, when a thread is in this queue in this condition variable it is not spinning and it's just uh, waiting on something so it's not eating up cpu cycles then when we say signaling on the condition it, it we're referring to some other threads uh, when it changes the state or the condition that a thread is waiting on it can wake uh, one of those waiting threads and allow them to run so what can be a real life uh, analogy of this so something like in the bank right so you have a queue in the bank right so something like that and that queue is treated as a condition variable and you have a number that which will be called right and that con when that num what con when that condition is true then you get to be attended by the teller when your number is called something like that the queue it is the queue which is treated as the condition variable. Now, this chapter will uh, discuss how to use the condition variable in solving the certain synchronization problems. It will not, uh, the next chapter will talk about how to implement the condition variables, but here more on the usage of the condition variable. So again, we're going to use the pthread library. So the first thing to do is to, when using a condition variable, is to declare a condition variable like this one. And then it should be initialized using a default initializer or using the 
init function and then these are the uh, wait and uh, signal functions that we are we are we are discussing in this uh, slide so the wait call I should do the wait call it waits uh, it takes a mutex okay? so it alloc as a parameter okay? and uh, this one is assumed to be locked before calling wait because the wait call will actually release this lock and put the calling thread to sleep and then when the thread wakes up it must reacquire this particular lock so that's why the wait function will require a mutex mutex lock okay basically uh, for uh, for some uh, to avoid certain uh, race conditions from happening So let's uh, take a look at a uh, sample implementation of how to use this condition variable to solve the join uh, problem that we uh, discussed earlier. So let's take first take a look first at the main function. So again, we have the print and then we have the thread creation and then we have the call to thread join here. So if you go back to the definition of thread join, this is how it will look like. So first, uh, we acquire the lock, which is M here for mutual exclusion. So as, as mentioned here, we need to have a lock here. So first we acquire the lock. And then while uh, done, While done equals zero, right? So done again is a global variable here, okay? Uh, we call the wait. So the main difference uh, in this implementation from the from this implementation is that here we have a semicolon with the spin, and unlike here we have the wait. So what happens here is that when this thread, uh, the main thread actually, it's the main thread that calls here, calls this function, it will, as described here, it will uh, put the main thread to sleep, right? It will release the lock, okay? But when this thread, when the main thread is awakened, it will retrieve the lock. So, at this point, uh, while not done, simply uh, sleeps. The main thread simply sleeps, okay? And then, that's what happens, okay? So the main thread is now queuing on this uh, condition variable C. Now, there are several different scenarios here. It's possible, for example, that right after thread creation, the child thread executes immediately. So there might be some issues uh, later. But let's say that uh, the child executes, okay? and in the child, uh, the child thread, the child executes, it prints the child, and then we have the thread it calls the thread exit function which is this one so what it does is to obtain the lock okay. so uh, this lock will actually be released by the the main thread okay. so it will acquire this lock because this one here will really uh, after calling wait the main the main thread will release the lock so the child thread can grab it and then it sets the state variable to done equals one and then this one will signal the will call uh, the child thread will call signal which will inform the threads in the condition variable queue or then in the condition variable 
to wake up and then uh, when after this calling this the the child thread should unlock the this lock here this mutex m so that it can be acquired by uh, when the child uh, returns okay uh, when the when the main thread runs and then it can unlock the the lock and eventually the program will uh, exit so this approach actually solved the problem of wasting cpu here by using a condition variable because the the main thread will not uh will not be in a busy waiting state it will sleep like it will uh it will wait on the condition variable uh c here So that's how to solve the problem. So, okay, so here is a more uh, as a brief description of what happens in the parent it creates the child thread and continues running itself, and it calls into thread join to wait for the child thread to complete. What it does is to acquire the lock, check if the child is done, this is the while loop, and then it puts uh, itself to sleep by calling. Uh, this is the this is this line here calling wait on the condition variable and then eventually releasing the lock for the child thread it prints the message uh, the message child it calls thread exit which uh, grabs the lock set the state variable done to equal to be equal to one to indicate that it's done and then signal the parent thus waking it so you might observe the that why do we need to why do we need this uh, state variable done to indicate whether the child is uh, finished or not? why do we still need to use this uh, state variable instead of just uh, using this implementation will this work Okay, so that's the question that we need to answer. What if we eliminate the done state variable? So imagine the case when the child runs immediately. So that means that, as I mentioned earlier, right after the thread creation, the thread is scheduled uh, immediately to run on the CPU, meaning the main thread is preempted. Right? So given that uh, scenario, the child will signal, uh, the child will signal, but there is no thread asleep on the condition. Why? Because uh, thread join runs after this one. But as, as the scenario describes, at this point, the child thread executes immediately. So the main thread does not have uh does not yet execute this thread joint so given the scenario what will happen is that uh the child will signal but there is no thread waiting on the condition variable so when the parent runs it will it will call wait and be stuck because there is a some form a deadlock between wait and signal right the child will uh signal but there is no one in the condition variable but uh the parent also it will call wait but uh nothing it will be stuck in that uh in that state so no thread will ever wake wake it so eventually we have the a deadlock basically so nothing is happening we'll discuss the last later but that's the scenario that uh we expect to happen if we don't include the uh, state uh, variable so that's why it's important to check this uh, state variable as shown in in this uh in this line here
So let's have another implement. So this is one one uh, one wrong way to implement that with the, with uh, because it does not use any state variable. Another implementation would look something like this. So uh, we have the join. If done, uh, the main difference here is that is it uses the if uh, statement instead of the of the while statement. So the issue here is a subtle uh, race condition. Okay? If we use if, there is a possibility of a race condition. The parent calls thread join, this one, and the parent checks the value of done. So this is the if statement. It will see that it is zero since it is uh, the initial state. Okay, And it will try to go to sleep by any way uh, call on the condition variable. Just before it calls a wait to go to sleep, okay, for example, the parent is interrupted and the child runs. So before the, the main thread or the parent thread can sleep, the child thread or the secondary thread gets executed or gets scheduled. Right? So the child changes the state variable done to, done, uh, to one, shown here, and signals. Right? So what will happen then? But no thread is waiting and thus no thread is woken because right before the main thread or the parent thread can sleep, the child or secondary thread executed. So the, the main thread actually was not able to sleep. So there is no, no thread to wake even though the child thread calls signal. And when the parent runs again, it simply sleeps forever because there is no other thread that's going to wake it up. So that's uh, another problem. So the main uh, the main approach actually, right, the main solution actually, I think, right, is not here. The main solution is to actually to prevent that the subtle race condition instead of using if okay, it should you should use a uh, while so that right after the condition is checked okay, it will uh, it will not be as, as fast as it can it can it will be it will uh, it will put the calling thread to sleep without being interrupted by the, the child or the secondary thread. So that's, uh, that's how to solve the, this implementation. So you a well look here. Now let's move on to the a more interesting problem, which can be solved by using condition variables. This is called the producer-consumer or the bounded buffer problem, which is actually popular are actually a widely studied problem and there are a lot of uh, use cases for this particular problem so it's worth studying this uh, topic so what is the producer and consumer problem so in this uh, in this uh, problem we have uh, we actually have two entities we have the we have the producer. The producer produce, produces data items and the producer uh, wishes to place the data items in a buffer. Then we also have a consumer which tries to grab data items out of the buffer and consumes it in some way. So an example would be a multi-threaded web server. So the producer will uh, uh, put HTTP requests in a work queue and then the consumer threads can take requests out of this queue and uh, process them. So that's uh, a basic example of a producer-consumer problem. In ComSci 137, you're going to talk about TCP. Okay? And TCP uh, will, uh, of course, use this producer and consumer uh, problem, especially when, when processing uh, TCP segments. But we'll discuss that in, we'll go back to this problem, how, how this is applied in networking in Topsy 1 to 7.
So here is an example. So a bounded buffer is used when you pipe the output of one program uh, into another. For example, you grab <coughs> a foo file that get foo from file text, and then you count the number of occurrences. So here, a uh, grab uh, is the producer process, and <coughs> and WC or word count is the consumer process. Between uh, these two, as noted here, there is actually an a data structure called a pipe or a mechanism. All right, hello students, welcome to another video lecture for ComSci One Two Five operating systems. In this video, we're going to learn about condition variables. So, in the previous uh, lectures, we've talked about the lock mechanism or the lock primitive, which is basically used to achieve mutual exclusion. When you say mutual exclusion, we try to ensure that a thread can uh, perform its or can run on it on a critical section without other threads uh, running in their critical section also so that race conditions will not happen so uh, we also discussed the different approaches on how to use locks in implementing data structures now in this chapter we're going to talk about condition variables now there are many cases where a thread wishes to check right, whether a condition is true before continuing its execution. So more or less, it's more of a synchronization problem. Or in you have you have one thread, uh, it will try to check whether another thread is done or something like that before it can continue its operation. An example would be a parent thread might wish to check whether a child thread has completed and you know this uh, when we talk about process right we have a parent process then you use fork to create a child process and then we have the wait system call for which allows the parent process to wait for the child process to to finish then in the discussion of the thread api we also talked about the join function we're in uh, at this point we know already that the each process has a main thread and additional threads can be created by using a thread library so in the illustration that we presented here we have a parent thread which is basically the main thread in the process and then uh, a secondary thread that will be created, which will be treated as a as a child child thread. But in any case, uh, I would like to emphasize that in Linux, uh, we usually don't have this parent thread and child thread relationship. We could just we consider them as threads. But in the illustration, we're just focusing on uh, the relationship, the parent and child relationship. So we are interested in implementing the join uh, function, meaning it will allow a parent thread to wait for a child thread. Uh, let's have uh, a basic uh, approach to solve this problem. So this is actually the template code that we would like to, to run. So we have the main, we have the main uh, function here. As you can see in the main function, we have the uh, first we print that we are first we print that we are in the parent, and then we create a thread here, and then. We wait for the child thread, secondary thread here, and then we print N. We are expecting this kind of output. So 
parent begin and then the child will be called because of this uh, this parameter here and then parent and so how are we going to accomplish this uh, output given this uh, template code a uh, basic approach which probably you will uh, think of if you are not familiar with threads and concurrency yet will be something like this one so we have you define a global variable done and this global variable will act as a flag so the modified code will look something like this still we have the print uh, parent print f print parent begin then the creation of the child thread and then we have a while loop here or a busy waiting line of code here so while done equals equals zero which is initially set to zero we have the busy waiting here or the spinning which it's up uh, cpu cycles and then bring uh, the and then the last one is parent and and then the child what the child does is after printing the after printing child it sets the done variable to one and when this loop happens again it will know that the, the value of done is one so it will exit and then this one will uh we'll go, we're going to achieve the this desired output using that approach it will work but the problem with the approach is that it is inefficient as the parent spins and wastes uh, cpu time so it's basically uh, performing a jump instruction jumping to itself okay so that's the problem that we are trying to solve so to solve that inefficiency we can have what we call a condition uh, variable right? so what is a condition variable so it's basically an explicit queue that threads can put themselves on when some state of execution or condition is not desired by waiting on the condition so uh, take note that it's an explicit queue okay? and then that threads will uh, put themselves in this uh, queue okay uh, when certain conditions are uh, needed to be true right so well and uh, they can wait on this uh, on this uh, queue or this condition variable this queue or condition variable they can they can be treated as the same when we say waiting on the condition it means that a thread puts uh, a thread puts itself in the queue until another thread signals and this ensures that the thread does not spin so remember we have different thread states when uh, when a thread is in this queue in this condition variable it is not spinning and it's just uh, waiting on something so it's not eating up cpu cycles then when we say signaling on the condition it, it we're referring to some other threads uh, when it changes the state or the condition that a thread is waiting on it can wake uh, one of those waiting threads and allow them to run so what can be a real life uh, analogy of this so something like in the bank right so you have a queue in the bank right so something like that and that queue is treated as a condition variable and you have a number that which will be called right and that con when that num what con when that condition is true then you get to be attended by the teller when your number is called something like that the queue 
it is the Q which is treated as the condition variable. Now, this chapter will uh, discuss how to use the condition variable in solving the certain synchronization problems. It will not, uh, the next chapter will talk about how to implement the condition variables, but here, more on the usage of the condition variable. So again, we're going to use the pthread library. So the first thing to do is to, when using a condition variable, is to declare a condition variable like this one. And then it should be initialized using a default initializer or using the init function. And then these are the uh, weight and the signal functions that we are we are we're discussing in this uh, slide so the wait call okay, the wait call it waits uh, it takes a mutex okay, so it unlock as a parameter okay and uh, this one is assumed to be locked before calling wait because the wait call will actually release this lock and put the calling thread to sleep and then when the thread wakes up it must reacquire this particular lock so that's why the wait function will require a mutex mutex lock okay basically uh, for uh, for some uh, to avoid certain uh, race conditions from happening so let's uh, take a look at a uh, sample implementation of how to use this condition variable to solve the join uh, problem that we uh, discussed earlier so let's take first take a look first at the main function so again we have the print and then we have the thread creation and then we have the call to thread join here so if you go back to the definition of thread join this is how it will look like so first uh we acquire the lock which is m here for mutual exclusion so as, as mentioned here we need to have a lock here so first we acquire the lock and then while uh done while done equals zero I, so done again is a global variable here okay uh, we call the wait so the main difference uh, in this implementation from the from this implementation is that here we have a semicolon which is spin and unlike here we have the wait so what happens here is that when this thread, uh, the main thread actually, it is the main thread that calls here, calls this function, it will, as described here, it will uh, put the main thread to sleep, right? It will release the lock, okay? But when this thread, when the main thread is awakened, it will retrieve the lock. So, at this point, uh, while not done, simply uh, sleeps. The main thread simply sleeps, okay? And then, that's what happens, okay? So the main thread is now queuing on this uh, condition variable C. Now, there are several different scenarios here. It's possible, for example, that right after thread creation, the child thread executes immediately. So there might be some issues uh, later, but let's say that uh, the child executes, okay? And in the child, uh, the child thread, the child executes, it prints the child, and then we have the thread it calls the thread exit function, which is this one, 
So what it does is to obtain the lock. Okay. So uh, this lock will actually be released by the, the main thread. Okay. So it will acquire this lock because this one here will really, uh, after calling wait, the main the main thread will release the lock. So the child thread can grab it. And then it sets the state variable to done equals one. And then this one will signal the will uh, the child thread will call signal, which will inform the threads in the condition variable Q or then in the condition variable to wake up. And then uh, when after this calling this the the child thread should unlock the this lock here, this mutex M, so that it can be acquired by uh, when the child uh, returns, okay? uh, when the when the main thread runs, and then it can unlock the that lock, and eventually the program will uh, exit. So this approach actually solved the problem of wasting CPU here by using a condition variable because the, the main thread will not, uh, will not be in a busy waiting state. It will sleep, right? It will, uh, it will wait on the condition variable uh, C here. So that's how to solve the problem. So, okay, so here is a more uh, as a brief description of what happens. And the parent creates the child thread and continues running itself. And it calls into thread join to wait for the child thread to complete. What it does is to acquire the lock, check if the child is done, it is the while loop, and then it puts uh, itself to sleep by calling uh, this is the, this is this line here, calling wait on the condition variable, and then eventually releasing the lock. For the child thread, it prints the message, uh, the message child, it calls thread exit, which uh, grabs the lock, set the state variable done to equal to be equal to one to indicate that it's done, and then signal the parent thus waking it. So you might observe the that why do we need to why do we need this uh, state variable done to indicate whether the child is uh, finished or not? Why do we still need to use this uh, state variable instead of just uh, using this implementation? Will this work? Okay, so that's the question that we need to answer. What if we eliminate the done state variable? So imagine the case when the child runs immediately. So that means that, as I mentioned earlier, right after the thread creation, the thread is scheduled uh, immediately to run on the CPU, meaning the main thread is preempted. Right? So given that uh, scenario, the child will signal, uh, the child will signal, but there is no thread asleep on the condition. Why? Because uh, thread join runs after this one. But as, as the scenario describes, at this point, the child thread executes immediately. So the main thread does not have uh, the snap yet execute this thread joint. So given the scenario, what will happen is that uh, the child will signal, but there is no thread waiting on the condition variable. So when the parent runs, it will it will call wait and be stuck because there is a some form a deadlock between wait and signal. Right? The child will. Uh, signal but there's no one in the condition variable 
but uh, the parent also it will call wait but uh, nothing it will be stuck in that uh, in that state so no thread will ever wake wake it so eventually we have the a dead block basically so nothing is happening we'll discuss the blocks later but that's the scenario that uh, we expect to happen if we don't include the uh, state uh, variable so that's why it's important to check this uh, state variable as shown in in this uh, in this line here So let's have another implement. So this is one one uh, one wrong way to implement that with the, with uh, because it does not use any state variable. Another implementation would look something like this. So uh, we have the join. If done, uh, the main difference here is that is it uses the if uh, statement instead of the of the while statement. So the issue here is a subtle uh, race condition. Okay. If we use if, there is a possibility of a race condition. The parent calls thread join. This one. And the parent checks the value of done. So this is the if statement. It will see that it is zero since it is uh, the initial state. Okay. And it will try to go to sleep by any way uh, call on the condition variable. Just before it calls a wait to go to sleep, okay, for example, the parent is interrupted and the child runs. So before the, the main thread or the parent thread can sleep, the child thread or the secondary thread gets executed or gets scheduled. Right? So the child changes the state variable done to, uh, to 1, shown here, and signals. Right? So what will happen then? But no thread is waiting and thus no thread is woken because right before the main thread or the parent thread can sleep, the child or secondary thread executed. So the, the main thread actually was not able to sleep. So there is no, no thread to wake even though the child thread calls signal. And when the parent runs again, it simply sleeps forever because there is no other thread that's going to wake it up. So that's uh, another problem. So the main uh, the main approach actually, right, the main solution actually, I think, right, it's not here. The main solution is to actually to prevent that the subtle race condition instead of using if okay, it should you should use uh, while so that right after the condition is checked okay, it will uh, it will not be as, as fast as it can it can it will be it will uh, it will put the calling thread to sleep without being interrupted by the, the child or the secondary thread. So that's, uh, that's how to solve the, this implementation. So you use a well look here. Now let's move on to the a more interesting problem, which can be solved by using condition variables. This is called the producer consumer or the bounded buffer problem, which is actually popular are actually a widely studied problem and there are a lot of uh, use cases for this particular problem so it's worth studying this uh, topic so what is the producer and consumer problem so in this uh, in this uh, problem we have uh, we actually have two entities we have the we have the producer. The producer produce, produces data items and the producer uh, wishes to place the data items in a buffer. Then we also have a consumer which tries to grab data items out of the buffer 
and consumes it in some way. So an example would be a multi-threaded web server. So the producer will uh, put HTTP requests in a work queue, and then the consumer threads can take requests out of this queue and uh, process them. So that's uh, a basic example of a producer-consumer problem. In ComSci 137, you're going to talk about TCP, okay? and TCP uh, will, uh, of course, use this producer and consumer uh, problem, especially when, when processing uh, TCP segments. But we'll discuss that in, we'll go back to this problem, how, how this is applied in networking in COMSA 137. So here is an example. So a bounded buffer is used when you pipe the output of one program uh, into another. For example, you grab <coughs> a foo file that you get, foo from file text, and then you come the number of occurrences. So here, uh, grep uh, is the producer process, and, <coughs> and WC, or word count, is the consumer process. Between uh, these two, as noted here, there is actually an, a data structure called a pipe or a mechanism, or a mechanism inter-process communication mechanism between these two processes. So the bounded buffer is actually a shared resource and it will thus require uh, synchronized access. So let's see an implementation of this bounded buffer problem. Here is a basic uh, version one implementation. We have a at this moment, we use a single uh, item buffer, which is basically just an integer, and we have a count, which is initially empty. So count will tell us whether how many items are in the buffer. Then we have two functions, put and get. In the put function, we have a value parameter, and then we assert that the count should not be zero, or the count should be zero before we set it to some value, okay? And then, uh, so basically we put one to count and then we set the, the value to the buffer. For the get function, we assert that uh, first there is an item, this assertion which will check tells us or checks ensures that there is an item in the buffer, then we reset that and then uh, we return the item in the buffer. So only put data into the buffer when count is zero. So that's basically the buffer is empty uh, and only get an item from the buffer when there is an item in the buffer. Or in these cases, you only have one item when the buffer is full. Now let us look at the thread. So these are the thread functions. Although it is not illustrated here, the actual main function for the threads, but these are the thread functions that will be passed to the thread create call. The producer uh, function, which will run on the producer thread, uh, basically, we'll have something like this. So, a producer and then uh, arg here will be the number of times it will uh, run. So, it's pass an argument. And then, uh, it will put an item i by on, put the, actually, the i on the, on the buffer. Okay. And as for the consumer, so the producer will produce several items, try to put it on the buffer to a uh, number of items here is the number of loops. The consumer uh, will just uh, simply do an infinite loop and try to get a value from the buffer and then print that particular value. 
So how do we uh, solve the synchronization problem here that we have here in this example? Right? So for sure there will be some uh, there will be some race conditions that will happen here because we have uh, threads trying to access uh, count and buffer here. So that's these are shared variables. So most likely there will be some race conditions unless we properly use some synchronization primitives. So the first solution is to use a single condition uh, variable and an if statement. So a single condition variable con will be used. And of course, we need to have for every condition variable, we need to have uh, a mutex for that. And this is how the code will look like. So we have the loops here to be initialized somewhere, and then the condition variable and the mutex. And the producer will look something like this. So since what we want to happen actually is for the thread uh, for the to be able to for the for the consumer to be able to consume items only if there are items and for the producer to produce items only when the buffer is empty. So this is how the code will look like. So we have i, the all variable i for the producer and uh, loops here. Okay, so uh, the this, uh, this line has been uh, uh, this uh, loop is probably defined somewhere, right? initialized somewhere, and then uh, this place to zero, and then i or some other location in the code, and then i plus plus. Then this is the part to get hold of the lock, and then if count equals equals one, we wait for we wait on the condition variable, and of course the mutex, and then. We put the we put an item on the buffer. Then, after putting an item, we call signal on the condition variable, and then we unlock the mutant. So these are the references to these lines. We're going to uh, take note of these lines. We're going to use this later. As for the consumer, this is the code. So again, the loops uh, will be initialized somewhere. And you also have the attempt to obtain the lock. And then if count is zero, meaning there is no uh, item in the buffer, wait on the condition variable and the mutex. And if there is an item, we try to get the item. And then eventually we signal on the, we try to wake up the other threads waiting on the condition variable and then we unlock the mutex and then we print the consumed trolley. So lines P1 to P3, a producer waits for the buffer to be empty. So lines P1 to P3, okay, this is the part that waits for the buffer to be empty. And then C1, C3 is just the uh, opposite. So it, a consumer waits for the buffer to be full. Now, with just a single producer and a single consumer, the code will actually work if you have one thread for the producer and one thread for the consumer. However, if we have more than one producer and consumer, some problems might arise. Let's take a look at this uh, example. So we have here uh three threads we have uh, two consumer threads so thread c1 for uh, the first consumer thread and thread c2 will be for the second consumer thread and tp three thread p will be the thread for the producer and we have the uh, global variable count so initially we have uh, count initially set to zero. And then let's say a thread C1 is in the running state. 
as you can see, so C1 in the uh, C1 is scheduled, so it is running, assuming that we have a single processor. So C1 will be this one, uh, obtaining the lock, and then uh, checking using if statement, if the count is zero, and then doing a wait. So, so it is running, running, and then it waits. So if it, if it calls the weights, the wait in the, on the condition variable, then we have it, uh, this uh, thread will sleep, right? So the other threads are just in their ready state. Then at some point, uh, P1, produ uh, the producer actually, Begin, begins, uh, begins running. So it will have uh, P1, P2. So if you look at the reference to the code P1, it will obtain the lock and then P2, it will uh, check if count equals one for the producer. So it will check uh, if the count equals one. So at this point, this is P2, right? Checking if count equals one. So this will actually be this will actually be false. So it will skip P3 and it will go to P4. So if you look at the code again, P4 will be put I. So uh, after this put I. Uh, count will now be one, right? And it will signal the condition, call signal on the condition variable to wake up other threads and then unlock the mutex lock. So up, up to P6, so the current value now is one. Then uh, it will, uh, Assuming, for example, that uh, it completed P6, okay? it completed uh, P6, so it's still running, so it will go back again to P1, okay? because uh, remember that our producer has a for loop, okay? so it will try to go back again to P1 to get the lock, so it's still running, it gets the lock, then P2, uh, it, uh, it tries to check if the condition is, uh, if uh, count is one. So at P2, it will notice that count is one, right? So P2 will not, uh, will check if count is uh, one. So since count is one, then it will call P3, which will actually put the producer thread to sleep. It will now sleep, okay. and then the scheduler then selected C1, right? The scheduler selected C1, and what will happen is that, okay, C1 will uh, acquire, try to acquire the lock, right? And then uh, check if the count is zero. So let's take a look. So acquire the lock, the mutex lock then check if the count is zero, which in our uh, scenario here, count is one. So what happens is count is one, so it will try to attempt to get, okay, it will try to attempt again. Okay. So it will try to attempt a get, so C4, and then uh, it grabs the data, right? It grabs the data, so after grabbing the data, after the get count will now become zero, C5, uh, let's see, at, at C5, for example, uh, C5 is waking up, so there will be a signal, so what happens is that uh, it shows here that the producer thread is uh, woken up and then so we have now uh, the 
the producer thread is now in the red state and then c6 uh, here will uh, release the lock right so you will release the lock and at this point the producer thread is still in ready but let's say that uh, the first consumer thread 3c1 is uh, awakened so from the ready state it becomes running so unfortunately uh, it goes to c4 it goes to c4 here it tries to get the data and the data is gone already right because uh, c2 has taken the data right so this is the problem with uh, this uh, first solution okay a first uh, version right so the problem arises for a simple reason after the producer woke tc1 but before tc1 ever ran the state of the bounded buffer was changed by uh, tc2 as shown here so tc2 uh, consumes or grab the data okay. there's no guarantee that when the woken thread runs the state will still be as desired right so meta semantics and uh, virtually every system ever built employs this uh, MESA semantics. That means that there's no guarantee that uh, even though the state is changed okay, or the, the thread uh, is awakened, it will still uh, maintain the old state that it was in. Right? So the other one, the other the opposite of Mesa semantics is the Hoare semant semantic semantics, which provides a stronger guarantee that the woken thread will run immediately upon being woken. Right. So this is what happens, and the solution is actually to use a while loop because uh, in these examples. Uh, we have if being used to check, right? So the best way to do this, to solve this problem, is to use while so that immediately the thread will be, uh, the weekend thread will be guaranteed to execute. So this is the solution to simply put a while uh, to use while statement instead of just the if statement. So the main problem that was solved by using the while by using while is that uh, we guarantee that the thread will uh, execute the this thread uh, the state will still remain the same when this thread is uh, awakened, but The problem also a problem also arises when we only have a single uh, condition variable. Right? So here is how the code will look like now. It's basically just the same, but with the different with just using the while. Right? So a simple rule to remember with condition variables is to always use while loops. Right? instead of using ifs. And uh, as I said, there's also a problem or an issue with this code. And this one is an example trace again to illustrate the, the issue, right? So again, we have the same setup. We have uh, two consumer threads and we have one producer thread. So the main issue actually arises when the Two consumer threads run. I mean, two con consumer threads run before the producer thread. So let's take a look at this 
first. So C1, as, as shown here, will be acquiring, C1 acquiring the lock, C2 will be checking for condition, and C3 will be uh, sleeping. Right? So C1 acquiring the lock, C2 checking for condition, so the condition is zero, so sleep, right? And then uh, thread two gets scheduled, so it will uh, acquire the lock, uh, check uh, if for the condition, so it's still zero, so sleep. And then eventually the producer thread begins executing, so uh, E1 is uh, acquiring the lock, checking for count and sleeping. So this is acquiring the lock, okay, successful, uh, checking, okay, so zero, so the buffer is empty, so it will skip P3, so it will go to P4 running and change the count to one, the buffer is full now, and then uh, P5, I think, will be... Uh, signaling so p5 will be signaling and then p6 okay so when it signals uh when it signals then it would say it it awakens uh c1 by consumer one thread and then still running uh and then uh still running this is the next loop okay succeeding loop so p3 will since the buffer is full, it will put the producer thread to sleep or on the condition variable Q, and then ready, and then uh, uh, consumer one thread will now be uh, awakened, right? Okay, because uh, it will now run, okay? So C2 is... Uh, it will now run on this code because it uses a while loop, right? It uses a while loop now. So it will go to C2, okay? And then it will run. So it will check the condition, okay? And still running. It, it drops the data, right? So zero. And then so C4 is grabbing the data here, okay? And then uh, still running. Uh, it will go to C, uh, it will execute C5, which will signal uh, one of the threads. It will wake, which will wake one of the threads waiting on the condition variable. And this time it will wake, uh, let's say, thread uh, C2, consumer 2. Right? So we woke uh, C2, right? but, but uh, waking up C2. Is, uh, is not going to work because the producer still or the buffer is still empty, right? So continuing, right? So uh, after C5, we're going to go to C6, which uh, will unlock the mutex, right? So still, C is still the consumer thread one running. Then it will go back again to C1. Right, so it will go to the this one here, mutex lock, right? Because it's done with this iteration. So it will go to C1 running, and then uh, C2 uh, will check if uh, C2 will check for the count, which is true. So it will enter the weight. It will enter uh, weight on the uh, con a condition variables. So it will sleep, and then uh, consumer two is already ready in the ready state. So it's still be ready, and uh, producer is sleep asleep. So count still zero, and then uh, C two will run. C two will run. Uh, okay, so we'll go on to this loop, okay, and we'll notice that's still true. So the problem is everybody now 
is asleep and nothing is going on in the system. So that is what happens uh, in this uh, solution. So the main issue is that a consumer should not wake other consumers. It should only wake uh, producers. So the same also producers should only wake other producers and do not, they should not wake uh, consumers. So the solution is instead of using just a single condition variable and while the solution is actually to use two condition variables and while well statement. So the producer thread will wait on the condition empty and it will signal fill and the consumer will uh, wait on fill and signal empty. So this will be the final solution for the producer. So we have two condition variables. Uh, we still have a single mutex. We still use a single mutex here. Okay. So the solution is almost the same. So you have you acquired, uh, try to acquire the mutex lock, and then you have the while loop. And then you wait on the, this is the producer. So you wait for the, you wait on the empty condition variable. You wait on the empty queue. And then you put I and then signal, uh, you signal field. Right? That means that you put something on the, on the buffer. Right? So you signal field so that, uh, and also unlock the mutex so that the consumers will be, will be signaled or will be informed to wake up because the, the buffer is now, has now contents. And for the consumer, so acquire, try to acquire the lock, do a while uh, loop here, and then wait for a full uh, buffer. And then when uh, the buffer is full, uh, you get uh, that value, then you signal empty, meaning the, the, the buffer is now empty, unlock the mutex and print the value. Okay. So that's the uh, solution. Now, in that particular uh, implementation, we only have a single slot buffer. But usually, we can have more slots on the buffer. This is actually what is used in the ring buffer in TCP IP implementation. Okay. So, more concurrency and efficiency if you have more buffer slots. So usually, this is a typical code for a bounded buffer problem. So the buffer is no longer a single variable, a single slot. So you can specify max as the number of items that can be cut that can fill the buffer, and then uh, fill a zero and use is uh, zero, and then count is zero. So when the put function will now look like this, right? So if you use field to index the slots with the slots with value, the indexes the indices in the buffer with values, and then uh, field uh, will just simply be uh, for the next item. So it, it uses this modular operator so that you can go back uh, around the, the buffer then you count uh, plus plus. And as for the get, so the opposite. So you get the, the you use the use uh, index, right? and then uh, use equals use plus one percent max, then decrement the number of items left in the buffer, then return the them. And for the thread, uh, for the thread functions, so, almost uh, the same, okay. so uh, nothing actually changed uh, in this uh, in this implementation as with the previous. So that's the implementation for the uh, producer-consumer problem, bounded buffer problem, and basically it uses uh, condition variables. Okay.
So producer only sleeps if all buffers are currently filled. And a consumer, uh, so P2, P2. Okay, so so uh, uh, there's a main, there's a difference actually. So unlike in the uh, in the previous uh, code, okay, the while condition, so while count equals one because that's the number of items in the buffer. So here uh, we have the uh, max. Okay. And for C2, we still re retain that as the zero. So a producer only sleeps if all buffers are currently filled. A consumer only sleeps if all buffers are currently empty. So this location is So that's it about the bounded buffer problem. You showed some progression from the simple implementation and uh, which are prone to errors and the final solution that we have given here. So there are two main problems. The first one is to use a while loop in checking for the state variable or the condition variable. Uh, the condition say done equals zero or count equals zero. And then uh, in the producer consumer problem to use two conditional, uh, two condition variables one for the uh, producer or two queues, uh, one for the producer, producer threads and another for the consumer threads. So here is the last item on this chapter, which is about covering conditions. So uh, the main problem with the previous discussions that there are certain uh, conditions that must be handled appropriately. So in this uh, section, covering conditions, uh, this is actually a problem encountered in a library for allocating uh, memory. Okay. So because when we allocate memory, okay, so let's have a scenario here. So we have a, a code here for allocating uh, memory, multi-threaded allocation of memory. So what happens here is assume that there are zero bytes free. So thread DA calls allocate 100. So trying to allocate 100 bytes and thread B, T sub B calls allocate 10. Both TA and TB wait on the condition and go to sleep. And then thread uh, T sub C calls free uh, 50. Which waiting thread should be uh, we can up. So this is the code and uh, this is the condition that must happen. So bytes left is less than size, right? So that is the the, the code, the condition that uh, the threads are waiting on, right? The bytes, uh, the, the bytes left as the So the question is which thread should be waken up when uh, another thread deallocates uh, 50. Should it allocate one? Should it uh, wake up T sub A or should it wake up uh, T sub B? Okay. So the solution is actually to, uh, instead of using con signal, okay, instead of using con signal here, because this will be called when free, uh, free is allocated, uh, when when this uh, thread T sub C calls free, this will be called and it will signal uh, on the condition variable in which the two threads are waiting, are waiting on. The question is who will process the signal? So the solution is to replace con signal with uh, con broadcast. So what it, what con broadcast does is to wake up all the waiting threads. And uh, since all the threads will wake up, then uh, that might, there might be some cost, associated cost with that, right? So threads that should not be awake will simply wake up, we check the condition and it go back to sleep again. So there is an overhead when calling uh, broadcast, but at least it covers all the conditions.
that must be satisfied. So no special, uh, no special coding logic must be uh, added. So that ends this chapter on uh, condition variables.